So, this particular table or column, it's for your rigid body dynamics. Rigid body dynamics, it is. Before going to explain what is this, what is comparison, what is linear motion, angular motion, etc. Basically, rigid body means, we have just seen this in unit number 2, but still, any body will have a small amount of inertia moment. When force is applied to the body, though it is moving due to the force application, the inertia value will keep the body in an equilibrium condition, so that the body will have a different way of motion due to the particles filled in the body. For example, this is a chalk piece, it is made up of powder. This white powder will have number of particles inside this. Suppose when I break it, those number of particles, if it is evenly packed, if it is packed continuously, it will have a different structure, say the substance. If it is unevenly packed, you may have some fine holes in this. So like that, any body will have different number of particles. And the moment of particles from one point to other point keeps on varying. Okay? So in a rigid body, this, this rigid body dynamics here, in this, this we have to study about elements of this rigid body dynamics. They are studying the elements. Elements in the sense, these are the different types of comparing parameters wherein these parameters will keep on changing for a body. So those elements, whether it is in a general plane motion or whether it is in motion, I mean rotation or in translation. So for example, before going this, first thing is something called translation topic. What is translation here? See, it is just, uh, say suppose this is body A and this is body B. Okay? If these two bodies have a, at point of time, say suppose one first second, you know, this body is in this position. If you want to transfer this body at nth second, at different seconds, say suppose fifth second here, or translate this body, or its rectilinear or a direct motion will be same from one particle to other particle. In a complete body, when the moment of or the translation of the particles from one to other is equally distributed or equally moved, it is called a translation. Right? For that, you can simply add up a sketch like this. I write this is body A and this is body B. Okay? Just this straight line okay motion becomes translation if you have even a curvilinear motion also a to b this translation in this curved path is also if the moment of the particles are evenly done okay the moment or the translation is evenly done without any uh, i can say uh, uneven motions that's called a translation then something called a plane motion. What is a plane motion? Means, any body will be subjected to particular load, either whatever it is, I mean in vertical and horizontal or rotation, whatever load it is, it will have, subject will be, it will be subject to a particular plane. Say, normally we speak about x, y, y, z and that is place in planes. In that, that if it is confined to a particular plane alone, you talk about as plane motion. So it is dynamics, rigid body dynamics it is, moment of the bodies in particular confined to a particular plane, this is your plane motion. Then thirdly, final one is called rotation. What is rotation you have here? So in the previous chapter we have seen it, say for any body you will have an vertical and horizontal motions and the twist of the body due to the applied load, there is a twist is also possible the twist will make the body to rotate or to slip from the available position to other position. So, studying about those rotations using these kind of you know, the parameters, either it is in linear motion or angular motion, which is using displacement, initial velocity, 
final velocity, your acceleration, time taken, all this etc. This kind of mathematical expressions will lead you to, you know, let you get some uh, problem to be solved. Okay, in to get an answer for this kind of either translation, rotation, or your plane motions. Now here there are about six points given. What is this? To compare what? I am comparing displacement first. The displacement for a linear motion is given by symbol S. Angular motion is given by theta. Then initial velocity u in terms of linear motion that we have already seen. Angular motion in terms of omega naught. Okay. See basically what is omega here? Omega is angular velocity. Very simple your basic physics equation is omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60. Hope you all remember because you studied this from even 6th standard classes. What is this 2 pi n by 60? And many people confuse with this 2 pi value in the sense you take just your 0, 90, 180, 270 and become 360 degrees. Pi is your circumference of that circle. Total circle have this total angle of 360 degrees. Pi is circumference of the circle. What is pi value actually? Normally, what is pi value? It is 180. Then what is 2 pi? 360. Total circumference will become 360 here. So the 2 pi is a total rotation, okay, into n is number of revolutions. I am talking about angular velocity omega, right? By divided by 60 in terms of seconds, you are converting per hour, I mean, in terms of seconds, that is it. So this omega is shown in terms of omega naught here just to denote this angular motion whereas this is initial velocity value in terms of linear motion it goes by u but then the final velocity is v basically for linear motion and angular motion it is omega right the difference between just see the difference between initial velocity omega naught and final velocity is omega here so 2 pi n by 60 is value of omega it is final velocity then what is acceleration A? Acceleration is meter per second square here. The same thing, it is half a year. But what in terms of what? In terms of time. So everything you angular means it based it is based on your rotation and time it is. Radians. You have to you speak in terms of meter per second square here. Meter per seconds here is in terms of radians it is. That is the difference. Then the time taken T is both symbol is same though it is angular or linear. Then these mathematical expressions of velocity is ds by dt. See before knowing this what is velocity displacement in general displacement here is your symbol s is it not? Displacement by your time ds by dt will become your velocity right. Then your dv by dt will become your acceleration that is it. Displacement you multiply in terms of time becomes velocity Again, velocity differentiate once this to time becomes acceleration. So these three equations in terms of linear velocity is given as v is equal to ds by dt here, and when you go to acceleration, dv by dt which is equal to d square. Two times if you differentiate your displacement becomes acceleration. Simple. ds by dt will be v again. dv by dt will become a acceleration. But when it comes for angular acceleration, it is angular. Angular means rotation means theta comes into picture. Theta is an angle because this 360 degree can be measured with it by some angle it is. Though it is uh, 10 degree, 5 degree to 360 degrees. So these are the, so here it is given in terms of omega d theta by dt. It is for velocity here. Right? And alpha is given for acceleration. Instead of a, it is given alpha here. Instead of v, it is given omega. Again velocity. It was normal velocity, angular velocity. And again, S is displacement here. Displacement, if it is moving in a, a linear straight line, it is S. Uh, suppose from 1 meter to 5 meter, you said displacement is this much 5 meters. And it is in rolling. In the sense, angular is rotation, it comes out theta it is. So these formulas you utilize for finding out some um, you know, problems to be solved. Just by applying this table of column, which is given in the book, but you do not forget what is linear motion symbol and its application as well as angular motion that you will finally get an answer to the problems. So one or two questions you solve with this say set of uh, formulas given. 
unlike every chapter there is a set of formulas say 6 or 10 or 20 formulas whatever it is it is mandatory for every student to remember this if you once understand the difference between those formulas apply for your problems to be solved but without remembering the formulas or either you remember it or you understand it you cannot solve any questions so right from the beginning I am telling basically engineering mechanics means unit anything you write any parameter you write if you do not write the proper unit it becomes senseless I use this word in every chapter you know you, you, you will feel awkward when I say always senseless it is senseless actually because you talk about linear motion s is displacement in terms of meter if you do not write it is 10 meter value it becomes senseless you cannot write a value of 10 simply so like that first is your unit in engineering mechanics second thing the formulas then the practicing problems 1 or 2 or 10 every chapter has got minimum 5 to 10 to 15 problems depending on the books whatever the book you refer I do not want to mention any particular book or the author name you refer, refer any book it is a reference book or a textbook or local author or foreign author all the same thing is these formulas to be remembered you should write the units and practicing problems 1 or 2 because every problem will have a different uh, approach the logic is same but the you know the approach will be different as well as the data will be changing one or two verses will be added the angles will be changed you will be totally confused so kindly go through all the problems given do not leave any problems so university questions which is already solved in the book which will help you a lot to get higher percentage of marks That's